Good morning everybody, my name is Gina and I'm a search marketing strategist here at Click Consult, responsible for social media and a variety of other different products here at Click. Today we're going to be speaking all about social media and it forms part of our Media Monday. Every Monday, why don't you check us out on Twitter or on Facebook to find out some great um, news and latest information really about the media world. So moving on. What is social media? Great definition here. It's an umbrella term that defines the various activities that integrate technology, social interaction, and the construction of words, pictures, video, and audio. Really, it's just another way of saying it's about conversations. The internet's developed, it used to be one-way information, now it's two-way, three-way, four-way information between different users using a variety of social platforms, things like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Here's a great uh, global data snapshot which is supplied by We Are Social, fantastic company. I'd like to thank them for this information right now as well. What we can see is 7.2 billion uh, in terms of total population. What I think is really interesting is actually the unique mobile users. There's 3.6 billion unique mobile users. That's about 51% penetration in the whole of the world's population. Think about that. How many people, so one in two, have got a mobile phone? Expand on that, in terms of active mobile social accounts, you've got 23% of the world's population. So just shy of those one in two, in terms of global data snapshot, I've actually got a mobile social account that is using um, their data to be able to keep in contact with other people on their social platforms and social networks. That is huge, okay? To have 1.6 billion people with social net, uh, networks, technologies in their pockets. That's where the data is going. That's where people are interacting. That is how we're communicating today. What we can take from this is, this is something which I think is really interesting. As of January 2015, the active users buy social platform. Look at Facebook, it's at 1.3 billion in terms of users. Now, what you can also see is QQ and um, one or two other messenger apps. What I think is uh, interesting here is between Facebook and WhatsApp, Facebook which by the way owns WhatsApp, um, they have 1.9 billion in terms of total audience and usership. 600 million and 1.3 billion. So when they made that announcement last year that they were going to be buying WhatsApp in 2014, people wondered why, but we can see one is a social platform, a network, and another one is a messenger application than digital in the UK. So we're in the UK, we like to look at the UK data. 64 million people are, you know, are in the UK. In terms of mobile connections, there are 74 million people. So there's, there's quite a lot of people that have got more than one mobile phone. That could be business phones, that could be secondary phones. Um, whatever they use as secondary phones, it's down to them really. What is interesting is there's about 50% of the UK population that actually has an active mobile social account. So they've taken their mobile phones and on there, from the actual UK population, they can actually access their social networks. Once again, that's absolutely huge in terms of numbers. Think about the amount of opportunities that you can use for your business to be able to communicate with a variety of different people in different sectors. Okay, so we're just gonna look now at the different types of platforms and um, give a quick introduction and a brief explanation as to what they are and how they can operate well for your business. So here's Facebook. Um, Facebook is, like we said, it's the world's biggest social network currently as it stands. Um, it's a way to communicate with friends, family and businesses. You have things such as company pages, so there's a company that sets up an, an actual user account and can communicate its products, services, when it's open, etc or user to user. So myself, might be even you watching, will have a Facebook account and that's a great way to keep in contact with your friends, with your family, finding contact, uh, content, sharing it, you know, posting status updates. That's the nook and cranny of it. It's about really sharing your interests um, through um, a great mobile platform. Um, a great piece of information here, according to recent statistics, people in the age range of 40 to 50 are Facebook's most active users. That's been a monumental shift over the last few years. It used to be the 18 to 24 market. They've moved away from Facebook. 
So if you're a business that is targeting a bit more of an older demographic, Facebook, that looks to be the platform you want to be using. Here's a great example of Facebook using, uh, of a company using Facebook for a social competition. My apologies there for the Freudian slip. This is AirAsia, and they had a contest for Facebook, which was regarding um, how you should be traveling together. And what they wanted to do was um, their maiden voyage from Melbourne to Kuala Lumpur, you could enter, and if you won, you could select all of your friends to join you for this maiden voyage. Um, what they did really well was they developed the application, they developed the competition, so that the more people that were entering, the more people that were sharing the information, if you were to select your friends, you could pick where they sat on the actual flight. So, you know, you can imagine one of those friends who's always really chatty, you're thinking, well, I can bear them for a few hours, but I couldn't do it for a whole flight. You can move them to the back row. What they found with this competition was lots of great user engagement. This won an award um, in terms of competition for Facebook. They had an increase of 30% of the fan base. They had a total of 12,500 entries and increased by 22,000 likes overall once the competition had launched and moved across in the first, uh, first few weeks. Just within two days of the launch, there was an extra 4,000 likes for the page. So it's a great way to engage a different audience, get them interacting with a different product and a brand which they might have not used before, and it made it fun. Competitions on Facebook can be fun, and this is how they were getting their message across. Twitter. Okay, with Twitter, um, you've got 140 characters to share your information, share your data. Um, when, you're, when you're looking at Twitter, think of it as really one large feed of information. And the way to characterize it is, yes, it's a microblog. So if you've got some thoughts, if, you've got, if you want to share some ideas, if you want to share videos, images, links, Twitter is an absolutely fantastic way of doing that. So if you're a company that is interested in about specific areas, so for example, if you're a Manchester-based plumbing company and you want to know, you know, is there a potential customer base that you could be targeting, you could use something like Twitter search to be able to see if anybody's got like a broken down boiler, for example, or issues with their plumbing and interact and engage with them to say, right, okay, well, we can come out, we can, you know, visit you on your premises today. Um, Twitter's been around for a few years. Recently, well, last year it issued an IPO. It's been a lot of information and news recently about it. The CEO is currently stepping down. Um, one of the big things about Twitter is a search function. Like I was just saying, if you're a Manchester, if you're a, a plumber based in Manchester, you can use Twitter search. Well, Twitter search is huge. Um, it's rivaling Google in some areas. It's doing better than Google in other areas, but Google is still the king of search. So there are plenty of opportunities to use that within your own business realm. Um, great um, information here. Daily active users of Twitter, 100 million. Okay, now there are a lot of fake accounts there, a lot of spammy accounts out there, but really for engaging you know, and lasting contacts and lasting relationships, you can move that forward with Twitter. I mean, I've met loads of people through Twitter, um, absolutely been fantastic you know, points of information, uh, great to do business with. Um, some have become some really good friends, some fantastic football writers. Um, absolutely brilliant for, for developing engagement and how we can move it forward. So, Twitter, fantastic little event and campaign that they used here. Mark Jacobs, he's a designer, um, really used the use of, uh, really used uh, hashtags fantastically. What is a hashtag? It basically means subject line. So if you're speaking about the same subject, you can see who's talking about that subject. You can see who's got that same interest or application. For example, the current Women's World Cup that's going on, that's hashtag WWC 2015. Um, if you were talking about the, Europe, the, the Champions League, that was CL 2015. So, things like that. What they used was hashtag cast me mark. And this is a way for people to actually engage with the brand and show themselves to be like the next face of Mark Jacobs whether that be from a fashion perspective, whether that be from you know, a model perspective. So there's some really, really great captions, really, really strong content that was brought about from the user to the brand. So if you're a business, if you can think of a great hashtag to associate with your own business, make it personal, make it so that people know that that's your hashtag, go for it, develop it. It takes time, but people will engage. People will understand that that is something that you own and will develop over time. 
Instagram. Now Instagram made a lot of news last year. It became the most popular social network in terms of active engagement and users. Um, it's really targeted the millennial market and it's done it well because it's creating um, a visual representation of interests, daily activity, without having to go into too much. You know, a picture paints a thousand words. Well, with Instagram, that's your life and you can take pictures. But it's not just about the user by themselves. Businesses can use this. Guitar companies are absolutely fantastic at doing this, promoting new ranges. Car companies, Mercedes, unbelievable at producing imagery, um, creating campaigns around you know, Instagram. Once again, using hashtags to identify themselves, to give them a subject line. Um, Instagram, think of it this way. It's almost like an online photo book. And it's your online photo book, if you want to use it that way. Um, and it's the online photo book of other people that you can follow. Great statistic here, 20% of internet users aged 16 to 24 have an Instagram account. So if you're a brand that is specifically targeting younger generations, probably a t-shirt brand, if you're a t-shirt brand and you're watching this video right now, you should be on Instagram, genuinely. You can promote your product well, you can target it at the right demographics, you can use their advertising platform to target some individual tweets, for example. It's a really, uh, individual tweets, individual Instagram profiles, my apologies. It's a really great way of getting the, the user active and engaged. It's a mobile centric platform. It started up on mobile. It's moved to other devices, but we can see here from this, you know, very choreographed picture of people using different mobile technologies. It's not that different if you walk into a cafe nowadays of how people talk to one another, um, of accessing that information. Our case study here, Beats by Dre. It's a company that started up, you know, from nothing by Dr. Dre, the rapper, created uh, a music, you know, portal sound system and headphones. No offline marketing to start with, they used online. They targeted the online market, they found the younger audiences and they're using Instagram now to really create that aspirational desire, that need to have things such as these fantastic headphones really targeted that demographic, they're using some great um, hashtags in their feed and they're really profiling people well. So it's a, it's a great use of the actual platform itself, who they're targeting, the types of content you're putting out there. It's a great storytelling mechanism. Included with that, something like National Geographic, a magazine which has been around for many, many years. Um, if you're in the UK and you're watching this, you would have probably seen these magazines and the doctor's surgeries. What's interesting here is National Geographic, they're great photographers. They have the opportunity to take beautiful pictures. If they're taking these beautiful pictures for a new audience, to get younger people engaged with the brand, to get also an older audience re-engaged with the magazine of a, you know, of a past generation, this is a fantastic way of doing it. National Geographic, some great commentary here. Um, they've really developed their social channels to really promote this kind of imagery, this kind of photography, which is very, very unique. So if you're a unique visual brand, Instagram might be the actual platform for you. And Pinterest. Okay, so Pinterest, pinning your interests. This is the platform where people are now talking and saying it's, it's gonna be like the Instagram success of last year. Are we seeing that this year? It's a little bit different. What does it actually mean? It means that you've got a user profile and you create something called boards. Based on those boards, that's also pinning your interests. So you might be into fashion, you might be into food, architecture, design. Myself, I'm a guitarist, so I love my guitars. What I'm doing is I'm finding images of those things that I'm going, yeah, okay, I like that. I wouldn't mind having that in my house. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't mind to have that in my life in the future. So I'm pinning those interests, that aspiration. If you're an aspirational brand, an aspirational company, if you've got a high-end product or image that you, you are portraying and you are delivering out there, Pinterest, that's the platform that you want to be looking at. There's so many examples of fashion brands, uh, jewelry designs, things like this where they're having great success because it's about actively engaging 
with a user audience that is looking at this. Now, in the UK, you've got a 75% female to male split, 75 to 25%. In the US, it's about an 80-20 split. So what's interesting is the actual target demographic as well. That's a little bit different between two very popular nations. Pinterest, now, um, last week they announced something called a buy button. It's um, huge news in terms of social media because what it will allow is if you've pinned something that has got a little blue icon in the corner, it means you can buy directly that product or item. It's available only currently in the US, it will move to, and, and only on iOS as well, but it will move to Android and desktop later this year. Uh, there is no news yet on the UK um, when it will be launched over here, but I'm hazarding a guess, uh, and you can, you can point me out that I was wrong probably, but uh, when it moves to Android and desktop that it will move over as well to the UK, this buy function. Um, Great statistic here. Average amount of time spent per month on user uh, by user on Pinterest is 98 minutes. That's just 13 minutes less than Amazon. So you can see this moving into the realms of a real social commerce platform. Okay, so Uniqlo, like I was saying before, fashion brands, they do really, really well on uh, Pinterest. Fashion's a really popular item, a topic of conversation, the amount of boards that are all around fashion. They've used Pinterest fantastically for some social campaigns. One was about their t-shirts. Images were uploaded by about 30 to 40 people on one given day at specific times. So people that were following that brand were having their whole platform and their whole board just change into their, into Uniqlo's product imagery. And it was there to promote a brand new uh, t-shirt range. So what they're very good at is engaging with users, showing new items. Pinterest is a great way of doing that. And now with this move more in towards a, a social commerce platform, that's going to be even more important. If you can do it that way, that's really, uh, if you can promote your business in a social commerce platform, if you've got an e-commerce business right now and use Pinterest to develop your social commerce, that's going to be an added arm um, really for you in terms of developing your, your whole business range as well. Well that's it from me, I'm Gino, uh, here from Click Consult on our hashtag Media Monday. You can uh, get hold of us on Twitter, Facebook and myself on Twitter, at GinoDB, uh, for further information or if you want to ask any questions. Thank you very much.